Hello everyone, my name is Z Camp and I'm the production stage manager for the Grant High School Senior Wax. This year has been really rough, especially performing arts, but we have persevered. We have done multiple Zoom shows, multiple Zoom improv shows, and we are so thankful to our administration so that we can finally get in the building and do this show here. Um, all of the seniors have put in so much work directing it, we have had students running tech, so many actors, and just really want to thank you for watching and we've had such a rough year financially as well so if you could please donate PayPal at Grant Theater that would be amazing it would mean so much to us hope you enjoy the show thank you hi my name is Eli my name is Sylvia and we are the co-directors of Naomi in the Living Room by Christopher Durang. Christopher Durang was a very popular playwright in the 1980s and late 90s. He was most known for his absurd and nonsensical comedies. For this reason, Sylvia and I knew that we had to direct a piece by him. This show deals a lot with gender and gender expression, and because of this, we chose to cast Naomi, a role usually filled by a woman, as a man. We hope you enjoy our production, and if you are able, we also hope that you go to Grant PayPal's at Grant Theater and donate what you can. Miss Todd is holding Eli's sister for ransom, and if the show doesn't make him enough money, we might not get her back, so please, donate! I would love to see her before I graduate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you! This is the living room, and you've seen the dining room, and the bedroom, and the bathroom. Yes, I know. I used to live here. The dining room is where we dine. The bedroom is where we go to bed. The bathroom is where we take a bath. The kitchen is where we cook. No, no, that, that, that doesn't sound right. The kitchen is where we <laughs> collect kitsch. Homo figurines, Statue of Liberty, salt and pepper shakers, underpants that say home of the walker, and, and so on. Kitch. The kitchen is where we look at kitch. The laundry room is where we do laundry. And the living room is where Hubert and I do all of our living, our major living. So that is the living room. What do you use the cellar for? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you use the cellar for? <laughs> well, we, we go to the cellar. We, we, we use the cellar. Oh, we, we go to the cellar to replenish our cells. Um, we go to the attic to practice our, our tics, our facial tics. And we go to the carport to port the car. Oh, please do not ask me any more questions. I'm afraid that I may not have the strength to find the answers. <laughs> Please, sit down. Don't let my manner make you uncomfortable. Sit on one of the sitting devices. We use them for sitting in the living room. Don't sit there! Oh, I want to sit there! Oh, shit! <laughs> Ingrid, it's, it's, it's my house! It's my living room! I can ask where I... I can ask you to leave! No, no, please. Sit down. This is the living room. It's where Rupert and I do all of our living. <laughs> <laughs> Are you two 
ever going to say anything, or do I just have to go on and on by myself? Or what? This is a very comfortable chair. I love it. Yes, thank you. Go on. Um, this morning, I washed my hair, and then I dried it, and John and I had coffee in the kitchen, didn't we, John? Yes, John, and we did. <laughs> and I love sitting in this chair. I think that I want to submit. Get up, get up. <laughs> <laughs> Chair, chair, big chair in the living room. Well, go sit on the frickin' couch, you morons! <laughs> Leonard! Leonard! Come on out here into the living room and have some conversation with us. You don't want me to soak up everything our son says all by myself, do you? You probably didn't know that John was Herbert's and my son, did you? Yes, he told me I met you before, you know. Shut up! <laughs> Hubert! Rupert! dead, I wouldn't know what room to put him in. <laughs> we don't have a dead room. <laughs> Tell me all about yourself. Do you have any children? We had five children, but they all died in a car accident. The babysitter was taking them for a ride and she was drunk. We were very upset. Uh-huh. Do you like sitting on the couch? <laughs> Mom, Johnny was telling you something sad. Oh, was she? I'm, I'm so sorry. Johnny, please, tell me again. We had five children. Wait a minute! <laughs> something is bothering me. This belongs in the kitchen. Not in the living room. The living room is meant for living. It is not meant for interior design, but ludicrously corny artifacts. Kiss! <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Hummel figurines? Very much. Uh, now that the children are dead, John and I have begun to collect Hummel figurines. Especially little boy shepherds and little girl shepherds. Oh, uh -huh, isn't that interesting? Oh, please, excuse me if I fall asleep. I'm not very tired yet, but I just want to apologize in case your boring talk puts me to sleep. I really don't want to offend you. Ah! Oh, I'm just so bored that I could scream. Give me a fear of that expression. Excuse me. I want to change my clothes. I'm tired of my color scheme. Do you have a clothes changing room? <laughs> no, I don't have a clothes changing room. You certainly are an idiot. Really, use the bedroom or the bathroom for all that I care. Children these days have no sense. In my day, we killed them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Must you go? Darling, I don't feel comfortable in these colors. They're hurting my eyes. Well, bring it back. What? I'm sorry. I, I don't know what I mean. <sighs> He's constantly talking about his color scheme. It's my cross to bear, I guess, that and the death of the children. So, who the hell are you? Anyways, I'm Jonna. I'm married to your son. All of our children were recently killed. Stop talking about your children. I heard you the first time. <laughs> God, some people can't get over their own little personal tragedy. What a great big crashing bore. Lots of people have a worse girl. So eat shit. <laughs> hey, 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 John.
Where'd you get this turn of a wife? The Salvation Army? I bring her back! <laughs> I don't think I want to go. Wow! You sure can't take criticism, can you? Sit down. Let's have a conversation. This is the conversation pit. You cannot leave the pit until you converse with me on at least five different subjects. Starting now. Go! <laughs> I was reading about Dan Quayle's grandmother the other day. That's one. Go on. She said there should be prayer in the schools. That's two. And that we should have a strong defense. That's three. And that the Supreme Court should repeal the Wade versus Roe ruling that legalized abortions. That's four. And that even in the case of pregnancy resulting from incest, she found that the woman should be forced to carry the child through to term. That's four A. Then she <laughs> said she hoped the mother would be forced to suffer and slay over a horrible job and take home a teeny tiny paycheck to pay for some hovel somewhere and live in squalor with a teeny tiny baby. And then she said she hoped she'd be sorry she ever had sexual intercourse. That's still for A! <laughs> Don't you think she's lacking in Christian charity? Oh, that's fine! <laughs> fine. <laughs> yes, I do. But then again, so few people are true Christians nowadays. I know that I'm not. I am a psychotic. <laughs> Get him off the couch. I want to sit there. Oh, yes. Couch. Couch. Big couch in the living room. I have room to spread. Oh, yes. Couch. Couch. You are my manifest destiny. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Edward, hurry on out here. I am about to have an orgasm. <laughs> you don't want to miss this. Oh, couch, big couch pillows, me laying on the big couch in the living room. Oh, yes. <laughs> Forget it! It's not happening! <laughs> Tell me, can you switch moods like I can? Let me see. <laughs> no, go ahead, try. Very well. I'm so happy. I'm so happy! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Do you have Chocolates for me. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Drop dead. <laughs> That's a good one. Very phony. I didn't believe you for a second. Herbert, are you there? Tell me, do, do you think that Schubert is dead? You mean the composer? I, is he a composer? Langford? Are you a composer? <sighs> he never answers. That's why I sometimes fear that he might be dead. And like I said, I don't have a dead room. We might build one on and that would encourage the economy and prove the Republicans right. <laughs> but I don't understand politics. Do you? Politics. Politics! Politics! What? Are, are you deaf? Are you stupid? Are you dead? Are you sitting in a chair? <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> you took off your mustache. I just feel so much better this way. Okay. <laughs> John and I are in couples therapy because of this. Dr. Kukaracha says his cross-dressing is an intense kind of codependence. If this Dr. Kukaracha cross-dresses, I wouldn't see him. That's what John here is doing. 
Too many men in women's clothing nowadays. Nothing gets done. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you feel gay, me so this way? I want to be just like you. Say something so I can copy you. Oh, John. Oh, John. <laughs> that, doesn't that doesn't give me much. Say something else. Maybe it's in your jeans. Maybe it's in your jeans. <laughs> this is a disgusting sight. Sherbert, our son, is out here prancing with his wife. You should really see this. This makes me uncomfortable. It makes me want to vomit. Maybe we should go. Maybe we should go. How come you don't dress like me? How come you dress like her? I want to be noticed. I just don't want to be considered John, insane. Please, just say <laughs> it. I know that you must, but we know Insane! It's he referring to someone in this room as insane? Sally, Gretchen, Marsha, Felicity, I'm calling the army in here, and then we'll have some dead bodies. Maybe we should go. Maybe we should go. Will you stop Insane? Them? I'll give you insane? What's the capital of Madagascar? You don't know, do you? Now who's it now? What's the square root of 347? You don't know, do you? Look at out of here, you think that I'm so crazy? If you want to dress like her and not like me, well, I don't want you here. I can burn the Yule wall by myself. I can buy geranium. I can buy apples. I can buy a gun and destroy and shoot you by myself. Do, do you get it? You're dead meat with me? Both of you. You're, you're ready for the crock pot. You're a crock of shit. Look at out of here. I don't need you and you're dead. No, I guess we should be going. I guess we should be going. Screw you and the horse you came in here on. Well, that was a nice visit.
Fortunato, elitist Fortunato. He thinks himself a god and us his pawns. You must understand, I bore his injuries as best I could, but now he has ventured upon insult, and I vow my revenge. But vengeance is a fickle thing. One must not only punish, but punish with impunity. Then again, he must know it was I who felled him. I've bided my time until now. He thinks me a friend. This will be his undoing. Fortunato, we are luckily met. You're looking well today? Indeed. Nothing like Carnival to lift one's spirits. That reminds me, you'll never guess what I've acquired. I've received a cask of what passes for Amontillado. Amontillado? How? A cask? Impossible. At this time of year? I have my doubts, and I was foolish enough to pay the full price without consulting you in the matter. But you were not to be found, and I was afraid of missing out on a bargain. I suppose it could be an Amontillado. Again, I can't be certain. A whole cask. As you are engaged in other matters. I'll go find Lucchesi. If anyone has a taste for these things, it is he. He will- Lucchesi could tell Amontillado from Sherry. And yet some fools think this taste is a match for your own. Come, let us go. Where? To your vaults. <laughs> My friends, no, I will not impose upon your good nature. <coughs> and as you're calm, the vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted The cost high. nothing. To your vaults, I insist. are extensive. We Montresors were a great and numerous family once. Remind me, what were your arms? A human foot? Crushing a serpent rampant whose fangs are embedded in the heel. And the motto? Nemo me impune <coughs> la chessit. No one attacks me with impunity. <coughs> what? Never mind. The nighter. See how it increases? It hangs like moss upon the vaults. We are below the riverbed. The drops of moisture trickle among the bones. Come, we really should go back before it's too late. Nonsense. You do not understand. I'm afraid not. Then you're not of the Brotherhood. What? The Masons. But I am. You just. I do not. Then show me a sign. How's this? You had me there for a second. 
Montresor the Mason. A silly thought. I suppose that's why I played the fool. Indeed. Onward. It's far too late to go back. Proceed. Herein is the Amontillado. As for Lucchesi, he is an ignorant. Feel the walls, the night earth in the air. Indeed, it is very damp down here. Once more, let me implore you to go back. No? Then I must positively leave you. But first, I must render you all the little attentions within my power. Perhaps a taste of Amontillado? <laughs> Perhaps. I take issue with the origin text. Why should Montresor tell our tale? He claims I'm elitist and full of myself. I suppose that means I've played my part well. But given the current medium we're working in, I'd like to provide an addendum. There's a rise and fall to this world, and believe me when I tell you I've risen, whining and dining with Italian nobles, Fortunato, the connoisseur, the philanthropist, you should have seen the way they looked at me. I could conjure symphonies of laughter with a dance of my tongue before I had made anything of myself. Laughter's why Lucchesi and the rest kept me around, and I used this to my advantage. I watched and listened. You know, people do the dumbest things when they're intoxicated. They utter secrets and they cheat. All the while, I watched and listened. Suffice to say, I became vital to the ongoings of the Italian upper class. I manufactured rises and falls in my world, and did it all without money, or arms, or family name, or even a keen palate. And perhaps you have borne the bulk of my aggressions, but it was the Montresor's time to fall and Fortunato's time to rise. You know, I got to choose that name, Fortunato, the fortunate. It seems my time is up. He's almost finished manufacturing my makeshift mausoleum. A fitting end for Fortunato. Buried amongst nobles. As morning drew closer, I feared my friend had drunken himself into a coma. Well, this sounds ideal, it lacks the nuance I had hoped for. His end would have been tantamount to that of a loved one dying in their sleep. But good things happen to those who wait. And at 4.32, he awoke. <laughs> a very good joke indeed, an excellent jest. We will have many a laugh about this at the palazzo over our wine, that mesmerizing Amontillado. But is it not getting late? Will they not be awaiting us at the palazzo? My lady Fortunato and the rest, 
Let us be gone! Montresor! You know, you're right. We really should be going. For the love of God, Montresor! Yes! For the love of God! Fortunato? Fortunato? Fortunato! In pace requiescat. Midnight Sun, an adaptation of a Twilight Zone episode, adapted by me, Addison Wood. We really hope that you enjoy this show and all of the shows that you have seen so far and are going to see so much. That you decide to donate to PayPal at Grant Theater. It would really mean a lot to us and it could help show your appreciation. Thank you so much. Now sit back, relax, try to stay cool as we take you into the Twilight Zone. You are traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Garbage bins. 
And we heard the sounds of voices. The newscaster said that it will get hotter and hotter every day now that the sun is so close to us. Once the heat is too much, that's when we'll, we'll, well, you know. The word that Norma is unable to phrase into the bitter, hot, somber air is combust because the people you have just seen have been handed a terrifying death sentence. You see, three weeks ago, the Earth suddenly changed its elliptical orbit and went on a path that gradually, day by day, moment by moment, took it and all of its inhabitants closer to the sun. And now our man-made devices used to cool down our air have become pitiful keys to our survival. The place is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The time is five minutes to 12, midnight. The sun is blazing. There is no more darkness. And this is Eliza and Norma's downfall. Because even at midnight, it's high noon. The hottest days in history. And you're about to spend them in the twilight zone. Norma? Is that you? Yeah. Was the store open? It was wide open. Chaos. A zoo of despair. There were no clerks around, and the sun was as big as I've ever seen it. This was all I could carry. That's all right. It was awful. Just a hand handful of people taking what they could grab. The shelves were completely empty. I was only able to grab some Hot Pockets, a carton of milk, and a few special brownies. Brownies? Bryce, oh, Grandma, could we please try some now? Of course we can have a couple now. I'm sorry. I'm acting like an animal, aren't I? Oh, no. Just like a frightened woman who hasn't had a brownie in a while. That's all. You should have seen me at the store, running up and down the aisles. And I do mean running knocking things off the shelves and yelling, where are the brownies? I even took down a middle-aged mom to get the milk. <laughs> Afterward, she just laid on the ground and cried. She cried like a baby, pleading for me not to take it. <laughs> I almost felt guilty. Folks, this is Fox News coming live on the air to bring you news from around the world. First, a message from your local police department to lock your doors and prepare to protect yourselves. Most of the police force has left with their kids to Cancun. From the White House today, anti-sunners rioted outside, demanding to cook eggs on the sidewalk as the rest of us watch in panic. From the White House's weather correspondent, the temperature now sits at 125 degrees with humidity at 91%. Folks, as of the safety of our nation, we are doomed. Well, he sure helps calm the situation. You see, Eliza, you aren't the only one who's frightened. What if the electricity stops? Uh, we'll be okay. I swear it stays on less and less every day. What if it snaps off and it doesn't snap back on? It, it won't happen. We're a long way off from this there. This place would be like an oven. Whatever happens, I'll be here with you. I know what you need. A big glass of water. Here. Thanks. I'll be here with you, no matter what. Today is a normal day for Norman and Eliza, really. The time is now 3 p.m., the new midnight. The town sleeps as the sun seeps down from the sky. Another normal day is starting now, but nothing is ever quite normal in the twilight zone. I just thought 
are you even up this early? I couldn't sleep. Did you get any? I nodded off for a while. I think I was out for about an hour. What was that? Some, uh, something must have No, I swear it had to have been someone. Eliza, you locked the roof door. No one could be up there. Yes. Uh, you locked the roof door, right? I, yes, well, at least I thought I did. I can't remember. Fine. Hello? Anybody in here? Come out, come out. Come out and be friendly. I don't have all day. If you won't come out, I have to find you myself. We, we have a gun. Get out of here. Down the stairs and out into the world. Leave us the hell alone. Fine. Never argue with a lady with a gun. Oh, I'm so glad he left. I haven't heard the door close yet. <sighs> Shit! Think I'd leave that quickly? Too easy. I'll drop it if you do. Fine. Jesus Christ, it's too hot to play games. Do you guys have any water? There should be a pitcher right on the counter. Norma! What, Eliza? What the hell? You weren't going to drink that. Were you? Please leave. Walk out that door. We don't want you here. Why don't you ask your sister? Come on, we can't let him stay. I say we should. Norma. What, Eliza? His existence doesn't impact us one way or another. If he's drinking our water, it's impacting our existence. And what if he finds, what if he finds out about the brownies? Oh, the brownies? Oh, I love brownies. They're on the counter. One. You can have one. So, do you have any family? I had a wife. She was a fragile little thing, really just a fragile little thing. I tried my hardest to keep the house cool. She didn't last more than an hour. I'm so sorry. It's, it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry about the gun earlier. I wouldn't kill either of you. I wouldn't harm anybody either. I'd just been looking for a single drop of water the whole day and I was losing it. This sun will make a madman out of any of us. I should be on my way. I don't know what comes after, but it has to be better than this. Anyways, I'll be on my way. Take care. He was kind of cute, wasn't he? <laughs> I don't see it. Maybe it's because I thought he was going to kill us. Oh, stop exaggerating. Shouldn't the news be on? I should be. Folks, today is the day. The day we have feared since this devastation began. The day that sends shivers down your spine. Today is the end. At 1 p.m., NASA reported the Earth's orbit to be 0.6 astronomical units from the sun. The temperature is now 140 degrees, humidity at 98%. And in just a couple hours, it is reported that the temperature will increase to 180 degrees, humidity at 100%. Before you sleep tonight, the Earth will be uninhabitable. This is the end. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is the end. Folks, we've put up a good fight, but I'm afraid that today is the day that we die. Norma. Eliza, whatever happens, we'll be okay. But what if we aren't? What if what he's saying is true? We're together, that's what matters. Remember that time we visited Whitewater Falls? On our way to Florida? Yeah. Back when Mom and Dad used to take us on road trips. It was beautiful, really. One of the highest waterfalls I'd ever seen. Do you remember the sound of it? I loved it. 
That wonderful blue water tumbling onto the rocks below. That wonderful, cool, clear water. How could I forget? Sometimes, when I get scared, I imagine that I'm there. This whole other world, one with mom and dad. It would be the perfect temperature outside. Maybe even a light drizzle. And we'd be happy. It would be perfect, wouldn't it? Absolutely perfect. Eliza? Norma? I love you. I love you too. What happens now? I... I don't know. What comes after? I don't know, but we'll find out soon enough. White waterfalls. Mom and Dad. All of us. Together. The sound tumbling onto the rocks below. Can you hear it? I can. Absolutely perfect. Eliza? Yes? Are you all right? You were running a high fever, but it should be gone by now. Fever? You were so ill, you scared me. You should be all right now, though. Do you have anything left to give her? Let's go look. I, I wish I had something left to give her, but the medicine's all gone now. Will you be able to come back with more? I won't. My family and I are going to try and move south tomorrow. My friend has a private plane. They say on the news that Miami's warmer. So they say, but the truth is we're just prolonging the inevitable. There was a scientist on the news trying to explain what had happened. How the Earth had suddenly changed its orbit and was moving farther and farther away from the sun. They said within two to three weeks there wouldn't be any sun at all. That we'd all freeze. It's a shame. I wish you both the best of luck. Norma. Oh, I had such an awful dream. It was so hot. It was daylight all the time. There was this Midnight sun and no night at all. Isn't it incredible to have darkness and coolness? <gasps> yes, Eliza. It's incredible. The poles of Earth, the extremes of how our planet could be inconceivably doomed. Minor exercise in the care and feeding of a nightmare, respectfully submitted by our thermometer watchers in the Twilight Zone. that we directed together. It's called uh, Playwriting 101, The Rooftop Lesson by Rich Orloff. We hope you brought someone to take notes with, because this is about to be an educationing, <laughs> enriching educational experience. It's true. Um, <laughs> anyway, 
despite the, my friend's blunder. Um, if you look down below, you can help support Grant Theater. Uh, there's a PayPal link. Anything that you can donate really helps. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope you enjoy the show. dramatic scenario. Two people in conflict. At least one in deep, inner conflict with high stakes, suspense, and an affordable cast size. How will the situation play out? That depends, of course, on the level of craft and creativity and that remarkable art form known as playwriting. Let's rewind from the start. And see what happens. I'm going to jump and nobody can stop me! Don't! Okay. <laughs> Not very satisfying, is it? Where's the tension? Where's the suspense? And what audience member is going to pay today's ticket prices for a play whose conflict resolves in 45 seconds? But most importantly, where can we go from here? Gee, you could have hurt yourself. Gosh, you're right. Want to grab a brew? Sure. Without intense oppositional desires, more commonly known as conflict, there is no play. When Nora leaves in the doll's house, nobody wants her husband to reply, <clears throat> Call when you get to work! <laughs> so let's start this scene over. <laughs> Maintaining conflict. I'm going to jump and nobody can stop me! Don't! <laughs> piss off, dipshit! No asshole, you piss off! <laughs> let's rise up her profanity, shall we? It alienates conservatives and makes liberals think you're a second-rate David Mamet. Rewind. And again. I'm going to jump and nobody can stop me! Don't! Why not? Ooh, you can just feel the suspense <laughs> rising now, can't you? Because suicide is a sin! Big deal. Theater is written by sinners, about sinners, for sinners. Nobody goes to a fellow to hear, Oh, Iago, you're so naughty! Always let the audience form their own judgments. Rewind a bit. Now! Now, let's try a different tack. Why not? Because I love you. I didn't know. I don't care! Let's see if we can find something less cliched. Why not? Because if you jump there, you'll land on my little girl's lemonade stand. And my little girl. <laughs> Is this better? Now, what have we gained? Be wary of minor obstacles. Unless, of course, you need to fill time. Again. Why not? Because life is worth living. Mine isn't. Excellent. We don't just have a plot anymore, we have a theme. Theme. The difference between entertainment and art. No theme, add a car chase, sell it to the movies. But with theme, you have the potential to create something meaningful, something memorable. Something college students can write term papers about. <laughs> so let's rewind a bit. And see where this thematically rich drama goes now. Because life is worth living. Mine isn't. Gosh, tell me all about it. Some expositional subtlety, please. Because life is worth living. Mine is it. Are you sure? Better. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm broke, I have no friends, and I see no reason to continue. So you're broke and friendless. Why not try Prozac? 
The popularity and effectiveness of modern antidepressants is one of the great challenges of contemporary dramaturgy. We no more want Willie Loman to solve his problems with Prozac than we want Stanley and Still Kowalski to get air conditioning. How can today's playwrights deal with today's medicinal deus ex machinas? Let's see. I tried Prozac once and it made my mouth really dry. Not great, but we'll let it slide. Let me help you. It's too late. No, it's not. You don't understand. I haven't told you. The worst. Fictional characters are rarely straightforward. You see, until a few weeks ago, I was in love. Deep love. True love. I was involved with two of the most wonderful gals in the world. <laughs> One was sexy, rich, generous, and caring. The other was streetwise, daring, and even sexier. Between the two of them, I had everything. Then, they found out about each other. And they both dumped me. Not just one, but both. Excellent playwriting. Here's a heartbreaking situation with which we can all identify. <laughs> Maybe not in the specifics, but in the uh, universal experience of rejection. At least you've had two exciting affairs. I haven't gotten laid in a year. A superb response. Another situation with which uh, we, we, we've all had friends who've had that problem. <laughs> so what are you telling me? That life can get worse? That's supposed to get me off this ledge? Hey, I'm just trying to help. Well, you're doing a lousy job. At least I've got some money in the bank. You've also got rocks in your head. A common beginner's mistake. Two characters in hostile disagreement isn't conflict. It's just bickering. We don't go to the theater to hear petty, puerile antagonism. That's why we have families. <laughs> uh, uh, so this goes somewhere interesting, or I'll, I'll have to rewind. Well, you've only got money in the bank because you're cheap. I am not! Well, you certainly dress like you are. Now, this is really degenerating. Listen, you stupid twerp! And if it were decent for them, maybe you'd still have a sex life. Loser! Pervert! Cheesecake! Cream! Asshole! And the subject! No, 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 no. Notice how organically the teacher's frustration has increased? What began as a minor irritation became unbearable when the human desire to control was thwarted. What are you doing? I hold the clicker around here. How dare- See how frustration becomes anger? Although the real life stakes are minor, the character's emotional investment is intense. That's good playwriting. Stop that. What do you think this is? A pure Della play? Well, how do you think we feel? We can't say more than two lines without being interrupted by your self-important pronouncement. How do you like if I did that to you? Uh, you? I have no dramatically viable reason to <laughs> interrupt me. Damn it, will you get back into the play? No, and you can't make me. Ha, missed. You superficial stereotype? Control freak! Cliché! Semi-intellectual! Contrivance! Academic tapework! First draft mistake! Wow! Hey! I'm the one with the problem! This place supposed to be about me! Tough! The one we play died with Ibsen! Damn it! Get back into the play! Don't tell me what to do! Ever since I was a kid, everyone's told me how I'm supposed to behave! When I was five, my mom sent me to my room 4,000 times because I wouldn't be the kid This monologue is not justified! Tough shit, it's my life! It's bad drama! I'll show you bad drama! Stop it! Come on, stop it, you're pulling focus! Butt out! Come on, guys, cool it! Get away from us! Just stop it! Leave us alone! I... I... I just got tenure. They're dead. How horrible! Is that good playwriting or is that bad playwriting? I... I don't know. It just happened. Hmm... Gee, you could have hurt yourself. Gosh, you're right. Want to grab a brew? Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
and professional comedy sports players around the world. And now, introducing the blue team, Ezra Schuster. Stars, top of that. I'm doing the bend and snap. 
I'm clutching my many trophies. Stop that. I'm stealing the moon. <laughs> I'm Too. New choice. I've read all those too. New choice. 
I, I, I burnt the books, actually, every <laughs> single copy. Fair enough. That's where mine went. So what you're going to want to do here is you see the skull right there? Uh-huh. OK, you see that skull? Yeah, yeah that's that So the skull. point is that you want to get the balls into the skull. New choice. The point is that you want to pick this up, and then we're going to want to move back here. OK, OK. OK, and so far enough? Yeah, this is good. The trick is that, you see the light over there? Yeah, yeah, the light. It's going to shine right where you want to shoot the ball. You see that? Yeah, yeah. OK, take a shot. New choice. On that movement. How do you take the shot? New choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm trapped in the machine. Oh no. <laughs> I don't have the kind of money to replace that. New choice. Oh, uh, do whatever. <laughs> New choice. Um, so, Star Wars? You want Star Wars? That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, Star Wars. I've Star also Wars. read all those books. <laughs> <laughs> there are books? Yeah. I, I thought they were them. just movies. Oh, yeah. that's what happened. I burned them after I read them. You've got a problem. <laughs> New choice. That's super cool. You should invite me to one of those at some point. I will. I'm doing Harry Potter next. So we'll Harry <laughs> Potter? Oh, boy. That's time. <laughs> All right. Well, then, keep that in mind, audience. Next is uh, the blue team captain up. And what would you like to play? Uh, four square. All right, four square it is. So get your team ready. Uh, Line up Please. on Stand next to me. the stage in a way that is not too close. Excellent. OK, so uh, for the game of four square, uh, I have some suggestions that came in. But I'm also going to ask for some suggestions from you. Um, so from tonight's audience, think about this a moment. I'm going to ask you for a period of time uh, previous to this last century. OK, so think about a previous uh, period of time. All right, so. Um, but for this first group right here, I have um, from Amy Gray, the famous Amy Gray. The location is uh, a hedge maze. You know, a, a hedge maze made out of, yeah, yeah. of hedge bits. Like okay. a Harry Potter? Y yes, exactly. So that's your location. Rotate. H hedge maze. Hedge maze for you, OK? Uh, next, I have um, for the two of you uh, a relationship between a homeowner and a ghost. <laughs> a homeowner and a ghost, and that came from Sawyer W. I don't know what city he's from, but yay, Sawyer. Okay, and rotate. Okay, and now I need, um, let's go for the suggestions from the audience. 17. Ancient Rome. French Revolution. Oh, my goodness, so many good choices there. Let's take the French Revolution. Nice. Oh. All right, French Revolution, and rotate. All right, so this will be our last one, and uh, let's give you the business of starting up a food truck. Right, so you're starting up a food truck, okay? All right, so let's rotate and reiterate our suggestions one time, and this team will be doing head maze. Good, rotate. A relationship and, and a ghost, ghost. relationship. Yeah, nice. <laughs> woo! Rotate. French, French Revolution. Revolution. Rotate. Starting a food truck. That one. <laughs> <laughs> rotate, and we will begin right here with this scene, and periodically I will yell, rotate, and the scenes, uh, you will see them in various rotations. All right, players, are you ready? Yes. yes. We'll have three minutes for your game of Foursquare and begin. Well, just two hedgehog bros doing a maze. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Jerry. Just two hedgehog bros. Yeah, that's like the Mario Bros. But we're hedgehogs. But hedgehogs. We're hedgehogs. Like Sonic. Like, but <laughs> man, you know Sonic. That's my cousin from back home. No way! Yeah, yeah. Oh, I sure love this home that I'm sitting in. Whoa, what was that? Oh! Hello? Oh! This guy's such an idiot. I heard that! Wait, who's there? Rotate. Let's, we have to build the barricade higher. Higher? Even higher, they're gonna come through, through the sewers and kill us. There are Wait. sewers? Oh crap, we have, we have to block off the sewers right now. <laughs> so, so we're here, right? Me and, yeah, we're here, Jimmy, Jimmy. This, I found this truck. Okay, I, this is a crazy idea. No one's ever thought of it before. And I thought I should tell my best friend in the entire world more than, but you know, Jimmy, Jimmy and I, and this, this truck. So, okay, okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Rotate. <laughs> so Sonic, yeah, he, he's he's fast. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, 
I'm so sick of getting thrown everywhere. They hate us. Nudists. I got sand in my pocket. No, not the pocket. <laughs> my pockets have sand. <laughs> Scoop it, everyone's crying. <laughs>
The play we directed is called Where Have All the Lightning Books Gone by Louis E. Catron. We want to give a big thank you to our theater teacher, Trisha Todd, as well as a massive shout out to our incredibly talented stage manager, Kylie Farmer. If you like what you see today, please consider donating to the Grant Theater Program. Our PayPal is at Grant Theater, and it'll be linked in the description below. We hope you enjoy our show, and we do want to give a trigger warning for gunshots toward the end of the play. Thank you. And yes, I am waiting for someone. What? My boyfriend, who is six foot six inches, is for whom I wait. He plays football for the Jets, he weighs over 200 pounds, and this six foot 200 pound monster will be here any moment. So goodbye. Wow. Goodbye. You didn't even look up. How did you know I was here? I knew. And that's all. And what about those things you said? I wanted to save you the trouble of asking. What makes you think I was going to ask you anything? I'm psychic. I mean, this is open range, no fences. So why are we trying to put up barbed wire, partner? Barbed wire? You and me, we're gonna have a shootout. And nobody gonna put up no fence, no hang on this here range, partner. No, sir. It's wide open, always was. My pappy and his pappy for him, they've been coming along this trail for years. Nobody stopped them, nobody stopped me. It's known, see, and I'm walking along this dusty road, brought towards you. Now, you gonna draw at me? Make your plan. <clears throat> Got me. I reckon I'm only the West. Second, best is gone. You got what you deserve, cowboy. I'm a going fast, but before I pass on to that great blue ranger up yonder, tell me, what's the name of that fast gun critter who shot me cold? Kate. Kate. That's him. It's a very attractive name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kate. You done me. No hard feelings. He's dead. And I never knew the poor fella's name. He'll have an unmarked stone up there on Boot Hill. William. William. Will, Willie, Bill. Billy the Kid. That's what some folk call me. Wait, are you really, really seriously? Am I really seriously? What? Thank you. Oh. Yes, sometimes. Wow. Okay. That's enough. <laughs> when? Sometimes. I knew you were going to ask me a question, try to talk with me, start a conversation so you could pick me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, the strongest man alive. Watch him pick up this beautiful girl using only one hand. <laughs> come on, come on. Just one thin dime, and he'll show you amazing feats of daring do. <laughs> well, am I psychic? Kate's a nice name. Okay. I like it. Swell. <laughs> they call you Kate that do speak of you. Oh, Bunny Kate, the prettiest Kate in all of Christendom. That's pretty good. But what light tis the east and Kate is the sun? No, 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 that doesn't work so well. 
<laughs> Do you know Shakespeare? Sure. He runs that little pizza parlor on 8th. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Do you? Of course. And all those books? Yes. This is about him. This is about his country, about other writers. And this, the complete works of William Shakespeare. Books mean a great deal to you, don't they? Of course. I figured. I, I mean, you have so many. All that to read. It's sort of sad. Don't you like to read? Uh-uh. Not me. I never met anyone who didn't like to read. Count no day less when you meet a different human. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't read. I live. Well, I live too. I'm not dead, you know. I know. I can tell. <laughs> You've got a good approach. I'll say that for you. And I've heard a lot of lines, believe me. Why? Sure. It's good. I normally don't speak to strangers. Well, you're not psychic after all. All that stuff about time and a book and a boyfriend. You were just putting me on. Listen, I wasn't going to ask you any of those things. What do you think of that? What were you going to say? This is your man on the street, friends, and I'm out here in the park on this beautiful day talking to Miss Kay Brown. My name isn't Brown. As you know, friends, out there in wonderful TV land, each day WXX TV asks the big jackpot question. If Miss Kate Brown knows the answer to that question, she wins our special prize. Matter of fact, my name isn't Kate either. That's okay. My name isn't William. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Are you ready, Miss Ella Gales? Oh, I do declare. I get so fearful in front of that camera y'all got over there. I just know I'll forget. The question is, are you ready? It is, whatever happened to all the lightning bugs? You have 15 seconds, Miss Sally Bears of Langley Goshen, Alabama. Oh dear, oh dear, I knows I'll forget. But do go on, honey. I'll just give it my very pinky little best. What's the question? We just asked it, ma'am. You did? Sure now? We did, sure now. Honey, would y'all ask it just one more time? I promise to listen real close, here. Yeah? Are you trying to cheat? Cheat? I... Why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we told you. Fifteen seconds. That's all. Now you're trying to cheat for more time. Honey, I would never cheat you. I know you wouldn't. That's why I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> all right, folks. Looks like this young lady blew it. Bang! This has been your roving reporter, Anthony Knight, your friendly man on the streets. Good night. Until later. Cut. That's it, Bob. Jeez, we got a stupid one this time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want your old prize anyhow. Yeah, sure. That's what they all say. All right, guys, wrap it up. Jeez, what a stoop. I didn't think that question was so good. Anyhow, I really didn't hear it. That doesn't make any sense. What? Well, first, you said the question was no good, then you said you didn't hear it. So? That's not logical. Of course it isn't. Well, um... Do you have a signed contract for me that promises logic? Uh... Well... No. When did I ever tell you I'd be logical? Never. That's when. But maybe I'm being very logical in the fourth dimension. How do you know? Maybe I'm from Venus or Mars, and that's the way we think. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. So what right have you got to tell me that I'm not a logical person? It so happens that I am, and proud, too. Proud of it. What do you think of that, smarty? You didn't have to show. Well, I am logical. Do you is? I didn't mean to shout. What? I didn't mean to shout. Did you say something? I said, I'm sorry I got loud. 
I can't hear you. Am I deaf? Deaf? I, I, I'll never hear the birds sing as they leave Camstrana. Did you ask if I can hear you? Indeed. Deaf. But will I tell my piano students? How can I, the piano teach, if I can't hear them? What will I for a living do if I can't teach piano? For piano, in, in the prime of my life. Ah, oh, my poor little Franz. Well, Herr Beethoven, he was a brave Capitan. In deafness, so must I be. That's right. Be brave. But let me see what it is you say. I said that you can still be a composer. You said I must meet the work continue? Your art is your life. You have years of great music in you. Yeah. I'll help you. You must be strong. My own, my sweet Carlotta. Yes. Oh, yeah. Quit that! Damn you. What made you think you could get away with that? After all. Howard, please put out your hand. Look, I don't want to leave. I want to stay, but you have to be careful. Don't make me leave. This, this is a gift, something you've given us. We have to be careful with it. There's a, I don't know, a, a big sweetness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Will you? Will you? Of course. Me too. Thank you. Why'd you do that? A uh, quirk of mine, I guess. It's so hard to talk to people. I know. Touching hands, that helps. I never thought about it, but yeah, I guess it does. I think so. Some people can't touch. That's their problem. Maybe that's why it gets harder. But talking, I mean, as you get older? Yes. Remember when we were kids, how we used to play? It was easier then. Oh, yes. Because we didn't mind touching each other? We didn't even think about it. Maybe we touched playing some game and we never thought about what it might mean. Now, though. It was easier. Things get complicated when you get older. There's always that suspicion. You know what I mean. All the pawing, grabbing. There. Alley. I missed. That shot always does it. That's a horse on you. Here, this one's easier. Okay? Nah, nah, you're not so good, Seymour. <laughs> there, your turn. Where do all the other kids go? I don't know. Well, since they're not here, I might as well play with you, Elle. You come and swim in with us this afternoon, Seymour? Where? The club. Nah. Why not? I don't know. Why not? Because it's stupid. That's why not. I don't think it's stupid. Well, I do. And that's what matters. Won't your parents let you go? <laughs> A lot, you know. What? They were killed. Last Christmas, my old man 
can grow for two cents. Pear! And that's like you wouldn't believe. Oh. <laughs> well, you're still a member of the club, aren't you? Battle club? Sure. Well then? I said I don't wanna. You don't like the kids there, do you? Maybe. They're nice. So you say? They are. It's just, they haven't gotten to know you yet. I spent my whole life waiting for someone to get to know me. How long does it take, anyhow? You missed. That's a horse on you. Oh, yeah? Watch this. <laughs> hey! Let's see you do that. Not me. Just watching warm me out. Besides, I'd rather stay with you than go swimming. Me too. It's all those books. They, they hide life. You gotta get rid of them. Do you want me to throw them away? I did. When I was ten months old. All out the window. We lived on the 15th floor. I bet the people down below always wondered about the books raining on them. Charles, it's getting so a body can't walk the street anymore. I just don't know what this world's coming to. Oh, these books, Mabel. I'll tell you, it's not like the good old days back when it rained cats and dogs. <laughs> Thousand books? Maybe tens of thousands. It was my mission in life. Everybody has a hobby. That was mine when I was young. Did you have fun when you were a kid? I did a lot of things I liked, so... I guess I had fun. Me too. What sort of things? Well, at night, when it was dark, we would play flashlight hide and seek. So would we. There'd be a dozen kids from the neighborhood. The street lights were sort of half hidden by the trees, and the breeze would make the limbs move, and the shadows would dance, and sometimes there'd be a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd hide behind the trees, even up the trees, or under a hedge, and whoever was it would try to find us. But it could never find you and me. Because we'd find a place where we could both hide. Together. As soon as it found us, it had to shine a flashlight right in our faces. <laughs> it was always sort of spooky. Frightening. In a nice way. All the strange noises. Being, being a kid, it, it wasn't always fun. There was always someone around. An adult. Trying to rush us. I never noticed. I'm well, sure. Always. Really? Go. All right, you kids, what you doing laying on the grass like that? Nothing. Honest, we were just hiding here. Hiding? That ain't what it looked like to me. What you doing? You there, boy. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? I've seen you around here before, ain't I? How would I know? You better get out of here. I'll take Miss Smarty Pants home myself. I'll tell my father on you. He's the mayor of this town, and he'll fix you. Yeah, her dad's the mayor. You better watch out. We're going home right now, and boy, you'll be sorry. I was just trying to protect you. Tell me you're sorry you called me Smarty Pants, or I'll tell my father that you talked about my panties. <laughs> and you know what he'll think. All right, all right. Now get it. So there. You really showed him. In the summer, we used to catch lightning bugs. Put them in a glass jar. If you caught enough, they made a good light. Better than a flashlight. God's own moon bugs. That's pretty. You're getting the hang of it. It's because you're teaching me the way. And so, say flower of the field, if do not compare to the incredible beauty of your eyes. Monsieur, he is so kind to give me the flower. So gallant he is, thinking of the flower right after he slew the dragon. Oh, so cruel the dragon. <laughs> it was pleasure for all to For Cicely, I love you. Oh, I love you so much. And I love you, Carl. I think I've always loved you, even before we met. You have the most beautiful eyes. Even when you're not smiling, your eyes smile. They always light up. Sort of friendly. Except 
when you're angry, then BOOM! <laughs> I don't get angry very much. Oh, yes you do. Precisely seven and one half times a month. I keep records. Never more than once a month. <laughs> no, sir. And the whole time I've known you, you've gotten mad at me approximately 900 times in 3,650 days. Honestly? Yeah. That's a pretty poor record. Why do you stay married to me? Too much trouble to get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the only reason? Well, of course. But all the children, what, oh, 20 of them? 20? Would you believe 15? How about three? <laughs> Don't you like kids? Not 20. Six, then. OK. Six. You're a funny one. I normally never speak to strangers. No? And especially never in the park. The park's the world. The all the world is a park. So all the world <laughs> is strange. You never can tell about a stranger. What he'll do. Sometimes it's pretty dangerous. I'm not a stranger. We know each other pretty well. Twenty kids. That'll do it. <laughs> you come here often? Never. You? First time. Must be fate. It was that question about lightning bugs. That really got me. <laughs> How'd you think that went up? I've always wondered. There used to be so many, and wrens, other little birds, and butterflies, the big ones. You said you knew what happened to them. I've got a theory. Tell me. Better not. It's sad. The least you can do is tell me for the sake of those 20 kids. <laughs> All right, students, today's lecture topic discusses the certain demise of small living things, specifically the nocturnal soft-bodied beetle of the family Lampyridae. Professor? Yes, Miss Darby? Sir, would you be so kind as to spell that? Yes. B-E-E-T-L-E. -E -E. What? B-U-G. Oh, thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> this insect is often referred to as a glowworm, but it isn't a worm, of course. It isn't a worm. It is called by some a glowfly or firefly, but... But it isn't a fly? Very good, Miss Darby, very good. But it does fly, of course. It is a does fly. <laughs> This insect has an organ at the tip of the abdomen that produces a soft light, a glow. Any questions? No, sir. That'll be all, class. Thank you. Uh, Professor? Yes, Miss Darby? You told us that you were going to explain the rationale behind the mysterious disappearance of these lovely insects. Why they are no longer so observable in such abundant numbers as they were in days of yore? I said that? Oh, yes, sir. I have them in my notes, if you'd like to see them. No, no. Last time you referred me to your notes, you grabbed my arm and you decor, Miss Darby. I won't do anything. Honest. I'll not waste precious class time examining your notes, thank you. Perhaps after class? Decor, Miss Darby. Since this was caused by a careless oversight on my part, allow me to finish. I wasn't being critical. The salient point is that they're gone. Whence and whither flown again, whence are we? The roses of our summer die, and the glowworms of our youth are killed. And how? And how? What is this that thou has done to innocence, freeways and speeding cars, the assassinated of the gentle butterfly and the warm glowworm? They fly no more. Is that what happened? That's my theory. Cars. I used to work at a car wash. The front ends were always smeared with bugs. Radiators, <laughs> radiators filled with butterflies. It was a pretty bad mess. Yes. Never mosquitoes, not chiggers or Japanese beetles. Only the beautiful things got killed. I know. Love gets killed. Not hate. Yes. The good people, not 
the other kind. Only the beautiful. And the terrible thing is, I don't know what to do about it. We should abolish all cars. I do. I have. Good. I never drive one, never ride in one. But how do you get anywhere? I walk. The whole world. That's a good way. When I'm God, I'll get rid of all cars and trucks and especially those smelly buses. What about planes? No, I like being up in them. Let's keep planes and boats. Mm, I don't know about planes and boats. The problem with the world is people can get around too easily. Move from one place to another and make trouble. Or find new beauty. Will you write me? Oh, yes. Every day. Twice and, on Sunday. And send an airmail? Airmail? Where will you be? Let's go. Over this way, men! Look out! We got her, she get that hit! Come on! Captain Frank Davis, APO San Francisco. Dear Frank. Captain? I don't think so, baby. <laughs> Lieutenant Tommy Wright, APO. Lieutenant? No. Mr. Timothy Franklin, APO. I don't think the army knows what Mr. means. Better just say private. Come on, we gotta get him, Rose! Dear Timothy, it seems so long since you left. That day in the park was that years ago or yesterday? You must come back. I was waiting all my life for you. Watch out! Over there! Timothy, please be careful. I found a little house for us. It's warm and friendly with lots of land for us and the children. Come on, you guys! You almost lost the truck! The house is surrounded by woods and... Dear Timothy, we saw lightning bolts. Hundreds. At night, it's like a moving carpet of God's own moon bugs. They'll be waiting for you, too. I don't know. I just don't know. But come on. Today's Sunday. So as soon as I get back from mailing this, I'll start another letter. I love you, darling. Thank you for giving me that warm glow. Your Elizabeth. It's comprised of three student-written pieces, um, starting with... Play by Cole Songster. And then Doctor's Note by Liz Jones. And finally, uh, First Aid by Quentin Turner. Hey, I know them. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I do, too. Um, <laughs> we'd like to give a special thank you to Miss Todd for running the theater program and making sure all of this can even happen. Uh, to the tech crew for doing such a wonderful job and making sure that everything can run smoothly. And to you, the audience at home, for coming and seeing our show. Yes, and so we can continue doing uh, shows like this in the future. We would like to ask you to donate to our PayPal link at Grant Theater in the description. And here's our show. <laughs> approachable individual. 
may I perchance take this very moment of time to occupy this very space that you very much happen to be near on this very seat that your very self happen to have very much settled upon? No, goodbye. Much gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> this interval of 24 hours has so far overcome me with tremendous sorrow. I wish to recount these sorrows and the reasons behind them. Are you among the folk who would reject the notion of these reasons, of which there are many, being recounted to an individual such as yourself, the seemingly semi-ritual individual that happens to be upon this bench, in this space, at this time? I wish them not to be recounted. Ah, you wish, but you do not outright reject. Then <laughs> carry on I will with my story of a most awful nature. Yet first, I must interrogate you on a simple topic. And all truth and frankly. That topic being, what is the title you are most commonly referred to by? Person. My entire title is Person 1. Now go, I wish to have your story of most awful nature recounted to me no further. I wish and outright reject. Leave. What an unpredictable occasion this is. <laughs> Trust the phrase, I will soon utter, or choose not to. However, my title is person as well, person two, to be precise on the matter, for a lack of clarity in situations such as the one we are presently in could lead to confusion. And that is one circumstance most pleasant when avoided, especially when- Thanks! You're endless conversing! Two. May I reference you as two? Disregard. Question revoked. <laughs> I myself henceforth make the personal decision to reference you as two, regardless of the rambling input you may have desired to place here. Quite similar to how you offered to converse endlessly with I, despite my wish and outright rejection of this conversing. Two, I came to upon this very space with the very hopes of obtaining the also very rare phenomena of silence. Do you know this phenomena? <laughs> if so, please, I request. No, demand that you allow me to experience it. Uh, hmm. I sense you aren't pleased by my placement near you. <laughs> this, quite frankly, saddens me. <laughs> Interaction with other individual beings in other spaces in other times, atop other benches. Interaction is my wish, person one. Yet, when I interact, instantly, all demand I be silenced. The interaction is not my wish, and I outright reject it. Now leave, too. <laughs> Individuals such as yourself, 
I bid you farewell in the least kind of manners. How can be rid of an endless converser, such as the one standing opposite of me? So, you just come again next week? Of course. After all this time, do you really think I'd miss a week? <laughs> Marshall, hi, um, it's Gemma. Uh, we spoke over the phone. I just wanted to come in and, you know, go over everything in a little more detail. So, the symptoms started a couple weeks ago, probably just stress from the move, but I've been getting cold. Like, not all the time, but sometimes when I'm walking from room to room. There are so many rooms. I didn't even realize this house had so many rooms. That's weird, right? Because it was by far the cheapest on the market, but it's so big, I feel like I'm getting lost just standing in it. Anyways, sometimes when I'm walking from room to room, um, I'll get a chill, like I'll shiver. And then it passes and I'm fine, but it's been happening a lot. My friend Sarah says that old houses can sometimes have um, cold spots. Is that true? Because I've been looking at WebMD and I think I might have um, Bodermal apithoria. <laughs> I've been getting more clumsy too, which is on the list of symptoms. Like, I keep my mother's old recipe book on the kitchen, on the counter, and sometimes I'll be in there cooking a cup of noodles or, um, a cup of noodles and it'll just fall. I've had to pick it up off the counter more times than I can even count, like, six times. And I sometimes manage to knock it off the counter even when I'm not in the room. Oh, and I've been seeing things. Like, um, when the lights flicker, even though I just changed all the light bulbs, I think I see movement out of the corner of my eye. And there's never anything there when I turn around. And I know I must be imagining it, but I can't help but feel like something is watching me right on the edge of my vision. Oh, and I have a runny nose. And I've been forgetting things. Like I never remember making the bed in the morning. In fact, I'm not even sure I know how to make a bed. It's one of those things that my parents just assumed I knew and never taught me, but every night when I'm ready to go to bed, um, the sheets are tucked, the blankets are folded, and the, the pillows are in this little pyramid? And I don't remember doing that, but I must have, right? Oh, and the coffee, the coffee. Just the other day, I was rushing down the stairs, and I was running late for a job interview, and I was thinking, no coffee today, Gemma, that's what you get for not setting an alarm. And when I'm coming down the stairs, I see it, waiting for me in my favorite mug. Did I brew it in my sleep? It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> but not cold like it had been left out too long. Cold like it had been put in an ice box. I thought I saw melting frost on the side of the mug in the shape of a handprint. <laughs> um, my mom used to say that if you put um, milk in the ice box while you're sleepwalking, it means you're waiting for cookies. Doctor, what does it mean when you put coffee in an ice box? I think I have a rash on my hand. I've been watching a lot of rom-coms lately after dinner, and just as the dramatic love confession turns into the dramatic kiss, my hand starts to feel itchy. No, 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 no. Itchy is not the right word here. More like something's brushing up against it, like a whisper of a touch. And it stays there all through the end credits, and I let it. And I'm careful not to move because I think I like it. <laughs> Doctor, I've been having dreams. I'm dreaming of a woman who I don't know. She's beautiful, maybe the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, with this long dark hair and these rosy cheeks and these lips that just... And she wears this long white dress and whenever I see her, she always looks so sad, like she's aching. Like she wants something so much she's gone hollow with it. 
But when she looks at me, I can see this hope creeping out the corners of her mouth like I'm something to hope for. And I can't help but feel like she's reaching out to me, calling to me. And if I could find some way to meet her in the middle, maybe I could be what she needs. Maybe I could make her happy. Do you think I have an iron deficiency? <laughs> <laughs> Relieved greeting. Reserved greeting. Lame excuse about public transit. <laughs> <laughs> Compliment about the tire. Awkward thanks. Um, Compliment about style choice. I'm trying to decide, decide whether, whether I want to sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> Question about occupation? Comment about being in between jobs. Immediately turned off. Often comment about volunteering at nonprofits. Turned right back on. Returns question about occupation. Mentions desk job. No, I'm hungry, let's stand. Distraction of ordering. Order something light. Order something heavy. Tentative question about current controversial issue? Safe, non committal response. Doesn't know anything about the topic. Knows <laughs> everything about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> about the specific part of the issue? Regrets not reading the article their friends keep sending. Starts to go Abrupt on. change of topic. <laughs> Awkward <laughs> silence. <laughs> Asks about hobbies? Gladly asked. Goes into detail no, about No, listening. <laughs> Did not sign up for this. Right in the middle of our annual Halloween horror movie marathon. Wait, you like horror movies? I love horror movies. Me too. What's your favorite? It's a toss-up between Silence of the Lambs and The Shining. No way. What? <laughs> Me too. Surprise and disbelief. <laughs> Destruction of food arriving. Comment about the food. Agreement. Attempted casual question about number of previous sexual partners? <laughs> Disgust and revulsion. <laughs> <laughs> Not having it. Distraction of pain. Offers right home. Accepts the olive branch. Wonders if anything has happened in the back seat before. <laughs> Does not want anything to happen in the back seat tonight. Uh, compliment about the car. Loves their car. Begins describing the features. Realizing mistake too late. <laughs> Accepts defeat. <laughs> Gives directions. So, how did your folks react? To this? Yeah. Uh, they mostly try and pretend like it doesn't exist. Oh, sad's not present. Plays music from niche music taste to break up the silence. Hates it, but doesn't <laughs> want to be rude. <laughs> Question about the artist, to seem interested? Glad they asked. Goes into detail no, about- change of topic. <laughs> Expresses gratitude for the ride. Accepts the thanks. Uh, remarks that I had fun this evening. Agrees. Uh, might like to go out again, but does not want to have sex. Wouldn't enjoy going out again, but does want to have sex. <laughs> Excitement about seeing you again. Agrees. Disagrees. Wants to go inside. Read signal incorrectly. Firm rebuttal. Uh, wishes them a good night. Was it something I said?
Lynn. And we directed this show. It's called Please Have a Seat and Someone Will Be With You Shortly by Garth Wingfield. We want to give a really big shout out to everyone who helped us make this show possible, like our wonderful theater teacher, Trisha Todd, all of the techies, as well as our wonderful cast and our awesome stage manager, Ava Anderson. Woo! Woo! Thank you so much, Ava. Yeah, thank, you. thank you all for watching. And if you enjoy what you see here tonight, um, please consider donating to the Grant Theater Department. Um, that's at Grant Theater on PayPal and the link will be in the description. We would really appreciate it. It helps us continue doing what we're doing. So with that, please have a seat and the show will begin shortly. Cool. So I should shut up now. I think that would be for the best. Gotcha. Right. I can do that. I'll stop talking to you. The end. You know my name. Okay, that's a little weird. No, it's not. It is. I'm sorry, but it is. Of course I know your name, Sue. Do you mind if I call you Sue? Okay. Look, I'll have you know I have mace in my purse. Calm down. Hey, easy there. I know your name because your therapist has come to that door, stood there, smiled, and said, Sue, every Monday night for the last 18 months. Hello? I didn't realize you paid attention to that. Of course I paid attention to that. Huh. But I wouldn't want to upset you anymore, and I certainly wouldn't want you to mace me. So like I said, the end. your name. Excuse me. You know my name. I don't know yours. I, I feel bad. <laughs> well that, that's because my therapist comes to that door, stands there, glowers and says, it's time. He's this super strict, super scary Freudian. You're right. He does seem scary. Is, is he German? Oh my god, he is. We do the whole routine. I lay on the couch. He stands behind me. All very formal. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm not entirely sure if he knows my name. I bet it's Albert. What? Your name. Albert. Yeah, you just uh, look like an Albert if I had to guess. <laughs> Ouch, okay. That hurts. <laughs> what? You don't want to look like an Albert? Um, no. No self-respecting man wants to look like an Albert. I'll bet it's Herman then. Double Ouch. Or Thaddeus. 
Okay, you are not making any friends here, Sue. Or Simeon. Simeon? Yeah, I went to college with a guy named Simeon. Just kidding, I always thought that was like the meanest name ever. Please, Simeon's parents should be in therapy. For child abuse, thank you. My name is David. It's nothing special, but that's my name. <laughs> that's a nice name. Uh, my name is Sue, so I'm known to judge in the naming department. It's nice to meet you, Sue. Likewise, David. So, so you never really noticed me after all of these months waiting out here? I never said I didn't notice you. Because I sure noticed you. You did? Absolutely, lots. Okay. In fact, I spent the first couple of months trying to catch your eye with the magazines we were reading. That's what you were doing? I was. Because I either thought you had an astigmatism or a tick. Are you serious? Yeah, you do this thing where you read your magazine, then lower it, then read it, then lower it, then read it, then lower it. It was almost hypnotic to witness out of the corner of my eye. Okay, I, I'll be upfront with you here. I have obsessive compulsive issues I've been dealing with in my sessions here. Well, th that explains a lot. I'm doing much better with that stuff now, I'm happy to say. I'm glad to hear that. Dr. Reifenschneider has been a very mild antidepressant, a wonderful side effect of which is that it's wiped out the obsessive compulsive stuff altogether. No, not entirely. You still do this thing where you run your forefinger back and forth across your upper lip while you read. So you really have noticed me? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes. N now and then. Look, I don't, I don't want to cross yet another line here, but now that we're talking, and since we have who knows how long until one of our therapists comes to that door, I've also thought about you. Outside of this room I'm talking now, I feel I should come clean about this. Uh, you've thought about me? I have. But why, <laughs> why would you do that? Am I scaring you? A little. I'm sorry, it's just... I've thought about what sort of apartment you'd have, what your life is like. You did? I imagined you were a first grade teacher. There's just something about you. Your demeanor, your scarf, the impeccably patient way you turn the pages of us. I could just see you reading Where the Wild Things Are to a class of screaming six-year-olds while they pulled on each other's hair and vomited. <laughs> That's a... Uh, wow. Okay, I'll be upfront with you. In my sessions, I've been dealing with the ways I put up walls and push people away. So while part of me wants to run screaming into the night now that you've told me all this, I, I, I won't. And I'll just say thank you. You're welcome. And just so you know, you don't have to worry about changing your therapy night. This is my final session with Dr. Reifenstetter. He's closing up his practice and moving to Vermont to spend his twilight years running a little candle shop. <laughs> and I only wish I was making it up because that is just so Freudian. I mean, candles? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, starting next Monday, I'll be seeing Dr. McBee down in the village. Dr. Reifenstetter says he's around my age and wears shorts in the summer. I'm looking forward to the change of pace. I'm, I'm sure. But... Uh, I don't know. I I saw you sitting here tonight, and I thought I have to say hello to you before I can say goodbye. I imagined you were a carpenter. Oh my God, you did. <laughs> On several occasions? A carpenter, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is very hard for me to say out loud, but I've also been dealing with trust and abandonment issues in my session, so you're really pushing all my buttons here tonight. I am sorry, a carpenter. That is the only thing guys dream about being mistaken for. <laughs> you have very strong forearms, <laughs> and I can tell you had a clean line when you saw one. I imagined you designed and made your own furniture. These very rough hewn chairs and benches you rub with linseed oil. 
Well, NPR played in the background. I love NPR. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, Car Talk? Please, I don't even have a car, and I live and breathe by Car Talk. Absolutely. I imagined you lived in Chelsea. I imagined you lived up by Columbia. And that you have a cat. And that you had this enormous moose head thing left over from your college years. And then I'd ask you for dinner first, but things would move quite quickly from there. We'd have coffee at Gramercy Tavern. See, now I picture Balthazar. And we'd take buggy rides in Central Park. And go rollerblading. I mean, I've never rollerbladed in my life. And we'd move in together after about a year. This very shabby loft out in Williamsburg. With a really wheezy radiator. But we'd love everything about it. And we'd adopt a dog. And join the local food commune. And make casseroles. And bake banana bread. And have a kid. Or maybe two. Or three. You and me. The dog and the kids. Out in Williamsburg. Forever. I'm an accountant. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I wish I were a carpenter, but I'm just, I'm so not. <laughs> I'm a marketing person at Publisher's Clearinghouse. <laughs> it's basically the devil's work. <laughs> and I live in a shitty walk-up in Spanish Harlem. And I live on Roosevelt Island. I mean, yeah. no one lives on Roosevelt Island. I do. What, what's up with that? My name is Albert. I'm not joking. I never tell anyone that my name is Albert because it makes the worst first impression ever. And uh, I have a boyfriend. A, a fiancé, actually. We have issues of intimacy and respect, which is uh, essentially why I'm here in couples therapy. By myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrified at the thought of marrying him. <laughs> but this, this was... This was so great. David. Albert. Yeah, it was, Sue. It was. Sue? Wait. Sue, before you go, I... I just want to say goodbye. change in format, that's why. <coughs> Where was I? Where were we? Oh, yes. <laughs> we would like to thank everyone who made this possible. Our lovely cast, our stage manager, Charlotte Steger, and our video editor, Finn Rudis. The sounds were also made by fellow students. Our music was made by Cortez Rivara and <laughs> Finley Green. And our laugh track was made by some of the Royal Blues members. Oh, and we would um. Uh, I'd like to thank Miss Todd and the rest of production and everyone we previously listed for making this possible. It wouldn't be the same without you. Right, Alex? Yep. <laughs> cool. So well, with that, let's get on with the show. Thank you and enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 23rd season of Life, the show that sheds light upon the dubious lives of your fellow citizens. Not just everyone can live their life to the fullest, and we've put it upon ourselves to solve this humanitarian issue one by one, step by step, and season by season. Let me assure you, viewers, our next subject is in dire need of some assistance. As I speak, they sleep unaware in their bed, the seconds counting down before their slumber is jeopardized by a deafening alarm. 
This is where our globally anticipated season begins. As always, our hidden cameras and mics are up and running, ensuring you get the best viewing experience directly from your device. So, without further ado, here comes our renowned life expert, Rich Dixon. Hey, Joel, woo! Man, am I glad to be back. I love my job. Believe me, Rich, it's stellar to have you on too. As one of our show's life experts, second to me, of course, would you mind giving the viewers a rundown of yourself and your qualifications? You know it, Joel. All right, where to start? I think my first real taste of su success came in high school, after being elected class president by my fellow juniors. After that, I went to college, got an English degree. You folks at home probably know me for the children's book, Something is Under My Bed, instant bestseller even won me a Pulitzer. And ever since then, I've been living just as my name implies, rich. So yeah, that's pretty much where I stand here today. I've got a loving spouse, thinking of some kids in a couple years. And as you can see, I got this living thing down. Oh, and also, I'm a distant relative of the man Tony Hawk himself. Well, I don't think I could have picked a better business partner than you, Rich. I hope you're pumped to take a look into the nooks and crannies of Mirabai Dornfest life today because there is a lot to see and a lot to improve. And with that, folks, our alarm is about to reach its end. Buckle in and prepare for action. It is not your place to question the will of the producers. Now, let's learn a little bit about the subject of our show. I, I recognize that voice. Oh, Joel, Joel, look, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the show. Grew up watching it every Friday night with my parents, but you gotta understand, I, I cannot do this today. This just isn't my day, man. How do you even get your cameras in here? You do not need to think about that right now. Anyway, it looks like Mirabai is in college right now, working part-time as a cashier at Walmart. Oh, but it looks like she is majoring in the fine arts. I don't know, Rich, as our resident life expert, what do you think? Is Miravai living a good life? Well, right off the bat, the fact that we're looking at an arts major is a huge no-no. And don't think we missed that hilarious pants drop, Mirabai. What, did you never learn how to do the laundry? Hold your horses, kind viewers. Not all hope is lost yet. You keep climbing that Walmart ladder, and you might find yourself in a hefty management position in just a few years. But that job was miserable. I hate it there. You couldn't keep me working in customer service if you offered me one of your personal yachts. Well, sometimes life is miserable, Mirabai. Success requires you bear through the hardships and pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Isn't that right, Rich? Couldn't have said it better myself, Joel. I did, and let me tell you, my yachts are wonderful. Oh, God, why is Rich the life expert again? Whatever happened to Lorene from season 12? Her advice was so much better, and she was actually pretty funny. What are you talking about? L Lorene was such a poser. Did you see the rating spike life had when they brought me on? I was the biggest upgrade this show's had. Now, Rich, don't give yourself too much credit there. <laughs> yeah, I've honestly seen guests give better commentary than you. And don't you forget who the creative visionary behind all of this is. I think now would be a good time to cut to our first fan segment. This one was sent in by a young lad by the name of Person 2. Oh, 
Oh my, truly remarkable. In all my days of roaming parks, I never had anticipated the opportunity to offer my valuable commentary on a televised sensation such as this very one. Joel, being a highly respectable and adept individual yourself, I hope to offer you a most earnest salutations. Person who goes by the fornament of rich, I hope you too will accept my salutations, though one day I hope to finagle your occupation. You see, I believe my aforementioned merits and commentary may be more meritable than your own. And you, globally beloved protagonist, I wish to thank quite profusely, your sorrowful missteps in life have provided me with this joyful feeling. Perhaps my own physicality is not as tragic and tremendously sorrowful as I once perceived it. What the? Who was that? Hey you, if you want to start baselessly making fun of me without knowing anything about my life, then can you at least talk like a normal person for crying out loud? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't like the sound of that guy. Whoa, hey Rich, whose side are you on here? Maybe you and our little friend aren't so different after all. Uh, <laughs> Mirabai wishes. I really do have a lot of yachts, though. Come to think of it, arts major, English major, pretty revealing comparison, if you ask <laughs> yep, me. a copious amount of yachts indeed. Uh, say it's a good time as any to check our ratings. Uh, let me just pull it up here. Don't you worry your pretty little head, Rich. I've got them on standby, and as always, we are hovering at the top of the polls. That being said, Mirabai has still got some heavy lifting to do in terms of drama, so take it away, Mira. Who do you think I am? You're sorely mistaken if you think I'm performing for you and your... Oh, sorry, one sec. Oh, it's my, it's my mom. I have to take this. Sorry, one, give me a sec. Hi, mom. Yeah, no, no, I know I said I dropped my laundry off in early in the morning, but no, no, look, I get it. I'll, I'll explain it all later, but I, I literally cannot deal with this right now. Okay? Cool. Yeah, I love you too. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy a new sweater. Okay, bye. Thank you. God. Oh yes, you literally can deal. <laughs> Just because something makes for good television doesn't make it right. I can bring the law into this. Whoa there, pal. Don't you even think about suing. We've had the complete right to film and record you ever since you agreed to Zoom's terms and conditions. You really should have read that fine print. Plus, we have the money to obliterate you in a legal fight. Rich, are you taking notes? <laughs> oh yeah, Mirabai was already off to a rough start. Then boom, mom calls and interrupts her in front of an audience consisting of millions. You can practically see the self-esteem plummeting through the floor. Almost as fast as our ratings in season nine, when Steven opened his closet and found that... <laughs> oh, all right, don't get too carried away now. Clearly, we have identified some of Mirabai's core issues. I'd say it's about time we use our reputations as elite life experts to lift her life out of the gutter. But first, we've got another call coming in. Whoa, dudes! I'm on TV! Oh, man. All right. Let's get to stepping. Love in the bonkers by Mirabai. Like, you just got out of sleeping in the bunk like some sort of left side and then went strolling straight to the drawers and hearing me. If I take a few vacays near a wicked basket myself when the upper end was starting to get rough, you don't believe me? Just some of my dudes throwing their jaws. You hear? I was trapped in the news myself. Up until I got a proper loony job, they're on my back like fleas on the back of some big old dog. A lot of red faced morons coming my way, but yo, anyway, got my adrenaline up in a twist just being here, but I gotta dip this chip. Good luck, Mirabai. Daggy T out! Uh, isn't it refreshing to hear the thoughts of our loyal fans, Rich? We have got quite a fascinating audience. You said it, Joel. The back and forth we build with our loyal viewers is a big part of why I love my job. Who are these people? Why aren't you filming them instead of me? Having all of these delusional randos screaming in my ear right now is like living in some nightmare. If you don't like the comments of randos, then you had better not read Rich's job description. <laughs> Speaking of Rich, what advice do you have to offer to pull Mirabai's life up to our level? Well, if I'm just some 
rando, then I'm not sure I have the expertise to comment. Very funny, Rich. <clears throat> uh, uh, sorry about that, folks. Uh, joke didn't land there. So, as I was- Oh, aha! Uh -huh, clear... uh -huh, found it! Found a camera! Has, has that ever happened before? Whoa, there, Mirabai. Now don't you do anything too hasty. You're just- oh, to... Screw you, Joel. I'm free. Now we just have to find the hidden mic. Hey, now would be a good time to cut to a break, wouldn't it, Rich? Uh, yeah, Joel, totally. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm sorry about the difficulties. It looks like it's a problem here. I've been a huge fan since like season 10. This is like a dream come true to me. Mirabai has been doing absolutely amazing. I think we can all tell. It's been really awesome. I, Joel, again, I really appreciate you having me on here. And while I was on here, I was wondering if I could just give a quick shout out to the show that I'm, I wrote and I'm directing right now with the talented Liffy Buck acted by uh, Lou and Finley. And yeah, we're... You know, it's coming out soon at Grant High School. Um, it's called Anywhere But Here. I really hope you guys can come and make it. Joel? Joel? <laughs> Am I coming through? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Joel? I don't know if I can't. I'm not getting anything back uh, from you guys. Anything I can do. <laughs> anything I can do or anything. I, um, um, <laughs> Joel? Hello? All right, looks like our tech gurus have got a backup camera up and running. Some incredible production value, really. Life always hires the right people for the job. Wait, you guys can see me again, but I found the camera. After 23 seasons, you really thought it would be that easy for you to break this show? I admire the creativity. Unfortunately, the longer it takes you to re recognize the reality of your situation, the less Constructive criticism, I can grace you with. Oh, yeah, what if I just leave the room? Cameras all around your house. We can give you up to 45 seconds to use the bathroom, though. That is, if you ask nicely. I'll just climb out the window, then? Suit yourself. Filming will continue, however, and I can't promise you your home address won't be linked to spectators around the world. I'll, all right, fine. You know what? I think I'll just sit here, expressionless and motionless. I'm sure your audience would just love watching a still screen, because that's what I'm here for, right? To entertain your audience, to keep your precious ratings up? Well, here goes nothing. There's nothing wrong with our ratings. I'll have you know that our audience is surely very entertained, and the, the mere fact that you think you could do something about that is honestly insulting, you narcissistic oh, girl. Oh, a goddamn river, Rich. Thank you, Rich. No need to lose your composure. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, Mirabai's rather infantile speech did not do much to improve her outlook. An attitude like that just won't win you a lot of favors, and it even sent our poor Rich to the precipice. My best advice here would be behavioral therapy. What do you presume, compadre? Well, as you described... The attitude we're watching unfold here is rather crude. That, coupled with the fact that our subject, lacking goals or motivation, has appeared to give up. Identity crisis much? <laughs> Mirabai should really start with some small wins in order to one day become a valued member of society, much like you and I. Maybe a cup of coffee is a good place to start. Cup of coffee, yes. Maybe some calories as well. A balanced breakfast is an important aspect to any productive person's morning, wouldn't you agree? Of course. Uh, I myself am privy to oatmeal, topped with butter, brown sugar, milk. It boosts immunity. That's an idea, Rich, but it is not a good one. If I'm in Mirabai's shoes, I'm downing a bowl or two of grape nuts. The box filled with power pack nutrition. Post's ever satisfying product is compact, lightweight, and nutritious so you can get your fill on the go. An excellent source of fiber that is low in fat too. 
Grape nuts are my go-to and they should be yours. With the help of grape nuts, maybe one day you at home could find yourself in Rich's position. <laughs> hey. And speaking of you at home, we have got another call coming in. Let's hear what they have to say. come on camera with me today, but I worked up the courage. Can you hear me? My cats are all I've got anymore. My only friends. All everyone else does is bother me. What a bother they all are. The neighbor kids throw rocks at my windows, and I can't yell at them these days. My voice is getting foggy. Between them and that Mirabai, I don't have much hope for these new generations anymore. Even without my cats, I can be on camera. It says a lot about me, but these new generations aren't like that. Mirabai is a disgrace for her unreasonable moping. You kind gentlemen are trying to move these young'uns forward to make a name for themselves. And what do you get in return? Oh. Okay. Why is no one who calls in ever on my side? What is up with that? Oh, much to the contrary. We are all on your side here, Mirabai. You wouldn't be on this show if your life didn't need improving, and improve it we shall. You have got to stop viewing this as torture and accept it for the gift it truly is. I'm perfectly fine living the way I do. Sure, I'm not perfect, but I'm far from this low-life bum you guys keep making me out to be. And I'm content with that. I don't need you to judge that for me. You may be content with that, but that doesn't mean we all are. We selected you in part because of testimonies given on you by friends, old teachers, even a few distant cousins. They were all in agreement that your life was in the gutter and that Joel and I were the only two really able to clean out the sewage. Wait, no, that, that can't be true. I trust those people. They, they never say that about me. No, Rich here is right. I am the only one capable of saving you. And I'm recommending you start your day off right. God, just shut up already! Okay, I used to be a fan of this show. I dressed up as Joel Toboggan for Halloween two years in a row, but now this show, man, it's humiliating. I've been here for 15 minutes, and all you've done is tell me that my life is terrible. This is all just... Just the most successful advice show of all time. Now, I hate to interrupt such an introspective and somber moment. Oh, no! We're going to do what I want for a moment, okay? You guys might all have, might have all the, the fancy tech and the, and the resources and the money, but I'm the protagonist of today's episode of this godforsaken creation, and until you let me off, you're stuck with your cameras on me. Your mic's on my voice, which means I control today's story. No matter what you cut to, no matter what witty commentary you offer, you offer it will come back to me. This isn't the virtuous act you make it out to be, Joel. You and your life experts have fun with your ridiculously large sums of wealth and your yachts and, and your grape nuts or, or whatever, all while profiting off the shittiness of life for your average Joe. Do you know what we call that in the real world? Cruelty. <laughs> you know, Mirabai, I think you put it best earlier when you said it to me. What was it again? Oh yeah, cry me a goddamn river. Really? Really, a after all that, still with the goofy sound effects and the witty callbacks. Great. Oh, don't you doubt it for a second. You really appeal to the audience's waterworks there. I admire the creativity. I don't think we've seen the show take in that direction before, have we, Joel? Rich, let's just... But that's all that was. Creative. Now, I don't mean to criticize, but it is in my job description, and although that was quite the performance you just put it on, to call it the truth would be an exaggeration. Rich, wouldn't it be a good time to check our ratings? <laughs> because the antithesis of your theory is right here. I also started watching life when I was a good deal younger. But I actually listened to the advice of the experts, I followed it, and I stand here before you, a self-made man. 
seriously rich, you need to snap out of this. The show must go on, and the audience is finding all of this much too harsh. A, a Pulitzer-winning book, a loving spouse, and copious amount of yachts to boot? Something lazy bums like yourself could just have if you put in the effort. God, Rich, we all know you're trying to be something more than you really are. What? How dare you? Oh. Oh, oh, look, I'm getting a call. Ring, 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 ring. Okay, that is very clearly just a uh, fake again? phone call. But... Rich, you cannot seriously think that she's actually... Ring, 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 ring. Oh, oh, hi, Mom. Yeah, that's me on TV, all right. I said I'll explain later. Well, you see, I woke up this morning, and I heard this laugh track, and I thought, oh, no, I was I was the main protagonist of today's episode of Life this season. Yeah, that, that asshole Rich Dixon is the commentator again. Told me I was getting points off for being an art major, and he's a life expert, so he definitely knows what he was talking about. Oh, really? Small world, that's interesting. Wait, but he said... He said... He was the class president. Oh, wow, he really is an asshole. Okay, bye, Mom. Thank you so much. My mom says she went to high school with Rich, and he was her secretary when she was class president. She must be thinking of a different Richard Dixon. I didn't realize Rich Dixon was a common name. What else have you lied about, Rich? Are you really a Pulitzer-winning author? Are you really related to Tony Hawk, of all people? Yep, yes, I am. You could ask the man himself. He'd happily confirm. And you can't base anything off of one phone call. One clearly fake phone call, that's all. <laughs> I mean, how do I even know she went to my school? Well, do you know an Asha? What? Uh, Asha was such a poser. Ha! Look, high school was a while ago. The details are a little fuzzy. Maybe we were actually co-presidents or something like that. The, the point is, is that doesn't mean I'm a serial liar or anything. Whoa there, you too. We asked for drama this season, and boy, have you delivered. Dare I say this is one of our craziest episodes yet, and as a result, our lines are practically buzzing with loyal viewers calling in. First, I'm going to patch through a familiar face that longtime viewers might remember from season 12. Rich, you are an absolute disgrace. As a student of the show, I couldn't believe when they let you on after I left. You know, it's only a matter of time until people like me actually start checking your resume. Pulitzer Prize winner. Interesting. Not even a nominee. I am shocked and disappointed. Do better. Do better? What is she? I, I, I do best. I won. It has always been my dream. I, I mean... <sighs> I won. It has always been my dream. I mean, it was a dream come true. I cried and basked in my glory as I had always imagined it. That's how it would have gone. That's how it went. I, how, how it went. Rich must be facing some pressure to perform. Look, it, it's, it's not too late. My, my next book is called Lendl the Lobster. It's my best one yet. The world will know my name. They already know my name. Right, Joel? Ah, drama, drama, drama. Does the world know your name, Rich? Maybe our next caller can answer that. Hey guys, love the show, Joel. Really, some good stuff. Rich though, man, you better watch yourself, alright? I have met a whole bunch of people, and you weren't one of them here. I don't know if you think you're my removed cousin or some jazz like that, but you better cut it out. Never heard of a Rich Dixon. Your last name isn't even Hawk, man. You think you're slick? Build yourself some courage so you can quit in dignity, how about? Anyway, it's been great being here. Peace. Uh, uh, y y y you guys just gotta let me clear some things up real quick. I can... 
Sorry, Rich, but calls don't stop for no one. <laughs> Looks like Daggy T wants some more time in the spotlight. What a rascal! Rich, dude, you got yourself in some sour britches, bro. I'm watching, and Mirabai's like, oh, dude, me mom's calling, and you and top guru for a discount, and you get a freaking, and you're like, what? Blubbering like you some sort of whale who done grow gills and flipped them inside out. So I'm like, this dude is a pickle, dude. This dude is a total pickle. And lo and behold, you get to Dylan right on cue. Man, spectacle in from my blind eye. Daggy T out. I, uh, I, I. Unneeded tissue, Rich. Maybe go clean yourself up and go ask your wife for a pep talk. I, I, I can't do this anymore. You're not being fair to me. So what if I wasn't class president? So what if I want, I'm i not a Pulitzer winner? So what if I'm not related to Tony Hawk? I don't even have a wife, I have a fiance. I wonder how long that'll last, God. But, but that's not the point. I have valuable advice. I helped you, didn't I, Mirabai? Didn't I, Joel? Help me, oh. Joel. Well, Rich, I don't have much of an obligation to babysit you. Though I can advise you to get off the show and go to your room. These ratings don't seem to favor you, unfortunately, so... Well, I'd say that was a success. Possibly the most twists and turns out of any episode yet. Alrighty then, Mirabai. Au revoir. Wait, what? Really? What? Really? Oh, you had better believe it. We need to save some drama for the rest of the season. You had put on quite a show there in the audience. Loved it. We might even have to bring you back at some point. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll move. I'll find a way out of your grip. Or, or, better yet, put me back on. You don't have the courage to let me keep talking about all the pain this is causing. Goodbye. Well, folks, that is a wrap on today's episode of Life. We in the studio like to kick things off strong and with style, and boy, was this a sign of good things to come. Though I do hear the most loyal among you ask, what about our life expert? Well, though Rich is unfortunately no longer with us, we've got someone just as exciting in store for you. In fact, here they come now. Salutations and greetings, seemingly enthusiastic audience. And you, Joel, my highly respectable and approachable newfound employer. Salutations right back at you, person two. I think you can consider this job finagled. Much gratitude. I will very much not disappoint. We are counting on it. Looking forward to your wonderful debut. Remember, folks, Life has episodes premiering every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We have got a heck of a season ahead of us, folks, and you will not want to miss a second of it. Not just everyone can listen to the advice that they need to, but we aim to fix that one episode at a time. Any day, any one of you, yes, you loyal viewers, could find yourself up on this very show. Look around. Who's to say the cameras aren't being set up as we speak? But until next time, this is Joel Toboggan signing off. Good night and good luck. Hi, I'm Libby Buck. And I'm Malachi Madrone. I wrote this show, Any Orbit Here, and co-directed it with the talented Libby Buck. We thought a lot about this intro, and at first we thought it should be funny, but we finally decided that we should speak from the heart. We've talked with our cast about this, and we've come to the conclusion that all of our lives lead their own path, and sometimes we're lucky enough for our paths to cross, and sometimes they fade away. And we feel so grateful that our path here at Grant ends with this show with these wonderful people. And this is not our goodbye, but instead our see you next time. We're so thankful for our time at Grant Theater. We wanted to extend a huge thank you to Trisha Todd, Marjorie Anderson, our lovely stage manager, Ruby Patrick, and of course, Finley Taylor and Lou Glassberg for being the best cast we could have asked for. We hope you enjoy the show, and it's been a rough year, year for everyone due to COVID, and we would really appreciate if you could donate to the Grant Theater program on our PayPal at Grant Theater. Without further ado, this is Anywhere But Here.
Halloween. Okay, so are we uh, gonna talk about you being 20 minutes late or are we just gonna like let that slide? Oh, sorry, what was it, 20, oh, 20 minutes late? Okay, okay, I'm sorry for being 20 <laughs> minutes late. I just come running to your every whim, <laughs> don't I? <laughs> Man, I feel like we haven't talked in forever. Ugh, no, it's been too long. I missed you. Gross. What? Oh, no, sorry, I meant to say, oh, I've missed you too. Have I ever told you how deeply in love with you I am? <laughs> so, how have you been? Oh, you know, exploring the world in a global pandemic. Absolutely riveting. Yeah. You? I'm all right. It's exciting. Yeah, uh, how's school? School is, well, school. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Are you going to college? Uh, yeah, I am going to California, actually. I got into CalArts. Wow, uh, congrats, that's, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited, but it's expensive. Yeah, I get that. What, what about you? Oh, I don't, I don't really know yet. Oh, okay, H have you been, like, uh, applying or anything? I am thinking about taking a gap year, oh, actually. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I could just use a break from school, you yeah. know? I'm thinking about traveling or something, maybe working. Yeah. Who knows? Life's short, I'll figure it out. Yeah, that's awesome. I hope so. Well, I mean, if it doesn't work out, you always have meaningless sex, right? Exactly, that is what I keep telling my mom. <laughs> well, I hope you're not telling that to your mom. Oh, come on, you know she wouldn't. <laughs> okay, you're right. <laughs> When's the last time it was it? Tuesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Callie. Yeah, Callie. Exciting. Yeah, exciting. You're gonna do great, you know? <laughs> you always do, Jamie. Sure, thanks. Jamie? Yeah? Do you, do you uh, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't know, actually, never mind. <laughs> okay, you can't just do that, what is it? No, 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 really, it's nothing. That's like the worst possible thing you can do to a person. I don't know, Jamie, I've seen worse. You would know, huh? Ouch! Oh my god. I'm, I'm really joking. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Anyways, isn't it crazy? What is? Everything. I, we're, we're 18, we're about to graduate, and I'm not ready to be an adult. They never taught me how to pay my own taxes. Who's they? I mean, my parents, high school, the American education <laughs> system. The they is irrelevant. All I know is that in a month, I will have officially committed tax fraud. Jamie, do you even know what tax fraud means? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> and that's exactly my point. <laughs> So, so a gap year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll probably just stay here and work. No traveling? I'd love to. It's just hard right now with COVID and money. Yeah. But hey, maybe I'll go camping. Camping? Yeah, camping. You're a camper? No. But camping? Yes, camping. <laughs> okay. Can I come? From Cali? Well, I'm not leaving right away. Yeah, but you're leaving. Oh. Right. No, I, I didn't mean it. No, like but you that. did. And you're right. It's okay. I am leaving, and I don't know when I get to see everyone next and when I get to see you next. I know. But and that's scary, and I'm scared. I don't want to leave everyone behind, but I can't stay here any longer. I, I can't. Why not? You could Because I, I can't keep smiling when I want to cry and crying when no one looks. At the end of the day, no one knows or cares to know what's going to happen, so I, I, I just pretend. I, I put on a stupid mask so I can still be me, but I, I'm not me here. I'm not me, and I want to find me. You'll find that in California. I don't know, Quinn. I just, I just want something new because nothing here is working. That's stupid. What? I said that's stupid. What are you talking about? It's not fair. I your friends love you so much, and it's just not fair to think that we don't because we do. We want you to be happy, we want you to smile, we want you to succeed because we know if you don't, who will? And I love, we love you. So stop being scared. It's not fair, it's not fair to me or to anyone else. I never said that I, look, I know that you all love me and I know that loving you all is just gonna make this worse and harder and I don't want it to be harder. I wish it was easier, but nothing has ever been easy. Not for us. And whose fault is that, Jamie? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I know, Jamie, you always are. You okay? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, no, I meant like with your leg. Oh, <laughs> you know, you'd think it would be a funny story, but I, I literally just fell out. I thought I was the clumsy one. Oh, you definitely still are. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, okay, 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 wait, this reminds me. Do you remember, like, okay, it was junior or sophomore year, I don't remember, but we went to that party with Lauren and Tyler? Yeah, people? I don't Sam, remember. Sam's party. Yes, yes, yeah. it was Sam's party. We were there for, like, two hours, and we were... Oh my god, we were so drunk. Yeah. Then the cops came and we had to like run out the back and hop over fences or run through backyards. I totally forgot about that. Uh, didn't, didn't you cut your hand? Yes, I did. And I ripped my favorite shirt. Oh, you were so mad about that. <laughs> my favorite shirt. Oh, but that night was fun. It was. I miss that. Everything used to be so much easier. I know. And now, I know. And now look at us. You're 18, and you still can't tell your left from right without using your hands. Oh, come on. At least I can <laughs> tie my own shoes. What? I can tie my own shoes. Jamie, it literally takes you 30 It has never taken me 30 Okay, well, it's taken you a really long time. Fine, fine. <laughs> I will give you this one. <laughs> so, did I tell you about my mom? No, what happened? She's been going kind of crazy during quarantine. She got laid off because of COVID, and so yeah. she's been looking for new jobs and has found this new hobby or obsession with clay sculptures. She's been practically every day making little scenes with her clay. I mean, to be honest, it's actually pretty cool. Um, her newest piece is called Clay Tastrophe. <laughs> it's this murder scene with clay men. She's actually getting pretty good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she spends all this time making clay sculptures and not working. Well, kind of. She does DoorDash sometimes. And so my dad has been helping out more financially, which is nice, even if it just feels like pity money. Ever since he moved out and married Lori, Ugh. he has been <laughs> less involved. But hey, at least we can pay rent. I'm sorry. About your dad. Oh, it's, he's, he's always, it's, it's fine. Is, is there anything I can do to help? No, but thank you. So, Clay. Yes, Clay, it's fun, I swear. I actually ended up making all the little hats for the detectives. Oh, the hats? I love them. <laughs> yeah. They're um, super cute. Yeah. I was even thinking about making my own scene. Oh, you should. I mean, it's always worth finding something to do in quarantine. Yeah, it's hard to not just end up doing nothing. You know? Oh, yeah. I've actually been trying to teach myself how to play guitar. Oh, that's super cool. Oh, are you yeah. going to play me a song? No, God, no. <laughs> trying is the key word there. But I'm getting better, I swear. I mean, you got to have some way to get all the artsy girls in Cali. Oh. Oh, yeah. right. God. I'm, I'm sorry. Why do you always do that? Jamie? Do, do what? You could just be so insensitive. I always thought you were nice. Dude. You know about my feelings towards you, and you still act like you don't care. Like I'm just a pit stop. I, it drives me crazy. I wish that for once, just one time, you would stop and consider someone else's I, feelings. My I, I, feelings! I don't try to hurt you. I, I, I'm just sorry. Asshole. Okay. Asshole. Hey, wait, please, please just please stop. Asshole! Stop it, right? Why do I always have to be sorry? I, I just want for once to not be sorry, and you know, that's, that's not your fault, but I, I just, I always let myself be, be rolled over and stepped on like, like a doormat, but I'm not a doormat, okay? I'm a person, yeah. Yeah, I'm a person with people feelings who cares just as much as you do, and I know, and I know that I don't show it as much, but God damn it, I do care. Why do I always have to be sorry? And, and I love you, you know? And, and I'm not going to stop loving you, but it just keeps getting harder and harder. And I'm not the asshole, okay? Why am I always the asshole? I, 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 I love you, you know? I don't know, I just, yeah. I love, I'm just, I'm just sorry. Jamie, I, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I love you. I love you too. No, Jamie, Please. I love you. Please stop. I love you. Please stop. You know this isn't fair. You know that I'm leaving. I don't care. When do you leave? Three months. I, I'm leaving in July. I can't stay here over the summer. Yes, you can. This could make you happy. I just want you then to let me leave. leave. Why can't you just let me go? That's not fair. You know what? You know you love me, Jamie. You love me, right? I can't love you like that. Not anymore. Any 
anymore? Yeah, no, I, no, yeah, I can't. You loved me. I loved you. I did. Okay. Queen. I'm sorry. I was wondering if there's any way I can reschedule my flight. Everything looks brighter in the morning. So yeah. Feel the strong. 